Now, if you've been thinking about creating an online business, then I think the very best time to start is right now. And I can tell you that in one year, if you put solid effort, solid consistent action into some of the models that I'm gonna be talking about in this video over the upcoming year, your life will completely change, I promise you. And the reason I know that is because my life completely changed within one year when I took my service-based business, which was working as an interior designer and completely flipped my business model on its head and took it all online. And from that year, I moved from making $0 online to making over a million dollars online. And in the last three years, I've turned that into multiple millions of dollars just from selling my online courses. And in today's video, what I wanna do is share what I think are the five best opportunities that exist in terms of building an online business in the upcoming period and just explain a bit about the pros and cons of each. I actually have dabbled and played around with every single opportunity and model that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So I am talking from experience in terms of whether you might like to try it, whether it's a good thing for your personality, whether it's a good thing for the way that you like to work. And I'm just gonna share the sort of the pros and cons as I have seen them from my own experience of playing around with these different business models that exist. So in today's video, let's talk about the five online business ideas that I think exist Exist at the moment and share some of the pros and cons of those business ideas. Okay, so the very first place to start is with building your personal brand around your knowledge. This is the easiest way to get started and really the most necessary way to get started as well because if you do want to build an online business, it's really important and really necessary to actually build an online community around that business or around that niche that you want to be creating. Now, some of you might already have a community, in which case you actually can move into some of the other ideas that I'm gonna be talking about in this video straight away. But if you don't already have a community, then this is the place to start. Now, I wanna tell you a little story about this. And that is the story of my husband who decided to do this exact thing this year. So he, at the beginning of this year, decided that he wanted to start a YouTube channel, to start an online business. He didn't really know how the business side of things might come about. And I said to him, the best place to start is with community, with building community and with putting out as much free value in terms of free, valuable content that you can consistently for as long as you can. And you will see that a community grows around that and people will start to tell you what they want from you in terms of uh, products and courses and other things that we're gonna be coming to later on in this video. So my husband started his YouTube channel. He chose the topic of crypto and trading and finance because he has a professional background in finance and trading and managing, you know, at a senior level sort of finance organizations in his corporate world. Not so much on the crypto side. The crypto side of things he actually was playing with and investing some of our money in crypto and doing a whole bunch of stuff and he was learning as he went. So what he did was create a YouTube channel where he combined that knowledge of his professional experience and also his building in public of actually, I'm playing around with these trades, I'm playing around with learning crypto and learning how this all works myself and I'm gonna share what I'm learning with you. So he put himself out there, he made his first video, he hated how he looked, he hated how he sounded, he you know has just added and tried to improve for the whole uh, probably 10 months that he's been doing that now. And he very recently crossed over the threshold on YouTube where you get monetized, which means that your YouTube channel now makes money from the videos that you put up. And so he has just consistently, he's put out about two, sometimes three, but consistently put that number of videos up per week for many, many, many months. Now remember back when he was first starting, he was looking literally on his phone every single day and saying, you know, oh, I got one subscribe, one new follower today, and then, you know, maybe none the next day, and then the next day maybe that person unfollowed, and so he had like 11 followers, and then he had, you know, 23 followers, and it just crept up and crept up slowly, slowly, slowly. He now has more than 1,500, I actually should have checked before I came on to record this, but I think last time I looked, more than 1,500, more than 1,600 maybe followers on YouTube and as I said is now monetized on the platform which means he's making a couple of hundred dollars per month which I know doesn't sound like a lot but it is the start of making money online and more importantly than that he now is building a very strong community so he has very engaged followers on his YouTube channel and those people 
and now starting to ask him for other help. They are starting to ask him whether he does coaching, whether he has a course, whether he has other content that they can go in deeper with him and get more of that knowledge out of his head in a paid capacity. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about with you with some of the other ideas that I've got for you in this video. So Paul's experience has been exactly what all of you are capable of doing. But what it takes is in those early days where you're seeing like no growth and you're thinking you're completely wasting your time and you're looking at the videos and you think they're absolutely terrible and you think that you look so silly on camera and you haven't got the right webcam which he didn't and his background didn't look right and all of the things that everybody starts with when they're first starting he used to sometimes doubt himself and I would say just keep going he'd say what am I doing this for this is such a waste of time he didn't really say that actually he sort of was sticking with it a bit more than that but like I would just say just keep going just be trust me the process will work if you just keep putting in the effort I think the problem that so many people have is they want that immediate result they start putting up some videos or they start posting to Instagram or posting over on TikTok or wherever they want to build a community build a platform and they do it for a few weeks maybe even a few months and they just don't see the results that they are expecting or that they want from it and as a result they stop doing it every week or they stop doing it every day and that consistency drops off and as a result it goes nowhere and they say the platform doesn't work this doesn't work for me I'm terrible at this and it you know just goes into nothing now one of the things that I learned when I was doing a YouTube course with Ali Abdal who is a big youtuber who many of you may have heard of is he says that one of the best things that you can do especially when you're first starting on YouTube is to just do your first 100 videos and so that's what I said to Paul as well when he was first starting is to just get your first 100 videos out there you will learn so much about the process of making videos, about the process of storytelling, about the process of making your videos look better. Uh, you'll write better headlines and make better thumbnails just by doing it, just by those repetitions. And so I'm passing that piece of information on to you because if you are going to be starting a personal brand, then that is the recommended sort of strategy that I think that you should have, which is to come onto a platform like YouTube. I think YouTube is fantastic because you've got those search engine, um, capabilities so it's owned by Google and it's like a second best I think second largest platform um, search engine platform in the world and so it means that you will have much better chance of people finding your videos organically especially if they're good and especially if you're consistent the algorithm will start to get to know that and they'll start to recommend your videos to people on the platform so I recommend if you want to start a personal brand which is my first recommended place to start if you do want to build an online community in the upcoming year or an online business, I should say, in the upcoming year, then where I think you should start is with YouTube. And I think you should put out at least a video a week. You should try and do two videos a week like Paul has done this year. And you just need to put in the reps and get to those 100 videos that Ali Abdal talks about and then see how you're going at that point. If you still have zero engagement after you have done 100 videos, then you either maybe are not great at making videos and haven't really been trying to learn and improve as you go, or perhaps you just find that you have not really enjoyed the process. And so that's a learning experience in itself. No matter what, if you put the reps in and do the 100 videos, you will learn something and you will be in a completely different space than you are right now. So that is number one, build your personal brand. Now, I think you should build it on YouTube. As I said, I think you should be doing one or two videos a week if you can. But I also think you should supplement that with going onto a social media platform and posting every single day on a social media platform that you pick as well. So for me, I love Instagram. It's the platform that I love consuming the most. It's so it's the platform that I create the most on as well. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you come and do that at Claire Leroy. Don't put an I in my name because I don't have one and you won't find me. So Claire Leroy, you will find me there. And I love Instagram. So I post there every single day and I... Um, just really enjoy creating there and I really enjoy consuming there. So whatever the platform is for you, that is the one that I think you should start with. So if that's LinkedIn or if it's Twitter or if it's TikTok, I think you should just go with whatever works for you, wherever you are hanging out the most, because if you are creating something for you, for your niche, then probably if that's the place you like to hang out, then your niche probably likes to hang out there as well. 
So that is my recommendation for my first idea, which is to build a personal brand. And that is to get stuck into YouTube, get stuck into social media and just start putting all of your ideas out there. And I've got other videos and other content on that if you wanna go in a little bit more depth on that because there's so much I could say about that, but um, that should cover you for that one. Okay, let's move on to the second recommendation that I have for you, which is to create online products. Now, what I mean by that is really sort of content download. So this is a really great way of just testing the water with starting to build and um, generate some revenue online. Now, one of the things that lots of people want to do is that they want to just create millions of dollars with an online business and they get frustrated when they're not seeing, you know, like lots and lots and lots of money coming in from the things that they're creating. Something that I think is really important to remember is that you are never, ever, ever going to be able to sell a million dollars worth of products until you've sold your first one dollar worth of products on the internet. So by creating some content downloads, and in a minute I'll give you some examples of what I mean by that, what this is going to do is it's going to force you to first of all work out how to do that. So you're gonna to have to work out how to create the um, document or the PDF or the download or whatever it is that you're going to create in terms of a piece of valuable content that people are going to want to give you their hard earned money for. So the first thing is to actually work out like what would that thing be, uh, what do, does it look like, and you know, learn how to use Canva and set up you know, a little shop to sell this on, and all of those sorts of um, skills that you're gonna have to learn in order to actually start making money on the internet. And all of that is Googleable, so there is nothing that's tricky about that. And just to let you know, I am not a techie person. I'm a completely normal person who had no tech skills when I first started my business, and I have taught myself everything by Googling, by watching YouTube videos, by um, taking online courses, all the sorts of things that I have done over the years to just upskill myself so that I know how to create videos and, you know, do all the sorts of things and sell products and do all of the sorts of things and build websites and everything that I have learned, taught myself how to do. So just a little side note to just let you know that you also are capable of doing that and you should not use that as an excuse to not get your online business up and running. But back to the content downloads and to creating the um, sort of smaller, low ticket priced online products which are going to give you that chance to learn those skills that you need to start to make some money on the internet. Because once you have that sort of um, traction with, okay, this is what I need to do in terms of a you know lead magnet to get people to come in through a funnel to purchase my online product and all of those sorts of things, these are all skills that you can Google, then you will be off to the races and you can start to build from there. So content downloads are a great way to get started with online business. And here are a few ideas for you. So I'm gonna look off to the side because I've got a little list here of just some things that you might like to think about in terms of different online products that you could create. So ebooks, uh, recorded trainings or videos, and I mean short sort of little workshop trainings because I'm going to talk about online courses a little bit later on. Could be planning kits, it could be uh, calendars, it could be Notion templates, it could be templates in other software, Canva templates, it could be questionnaires, cheat sheets, blueprints, checklists, action plans, summaries, a resource list, a workbook, a library of resources that you have curated from your own experience of working in the niche, supplier lists, inspiration guides, playbooks, step-by-step -step processes, uh, compilation of your most frequently asked questions, so answering your most frequently asked questions. That would have to be quite valuable though for someone to wanna pay for that. That may be more a lead magnet type of thing. And also just kits or, um, you know, if you have something like if you're an interior designer, you might have a renovation kit or a renovation folder or something like that that you could put together as an online download. So that's just a few ideas for you, just to give you uh, a few, or I've actually got a few few extras here as well. So spreadsheets, bundles, templates, schedules, processes. So um, anything where you have a process or a system that you use in your own business, in your own life, could be turned into something that other people would find valuable. So have a think about what those things are. If you're a particularly organized person, perhaps you've got Notion templates or other things that you use that you have created for yourself that you find really helpful, meal planning templates, it doesn't, whatever your niche is and what your area of expertise in, think about what you could create in terms of a download and as I said, just try and get those initial $19 in for a download or $29 in for a download and start to learn that process of how to make money on the internet. So that is my second idea for you. 
Idea number three is group coaching. So this is sort of assuming that you are coming to this with some knowledge and experience and professional sort of expertise in an area that people need help with. So lots of times people will do that one-to-one. So let's take interior design as an example, or we could take business coaching as an example. So people might come to an interior designer and say, um, you know, will you work with me on renovating my house? People might come to a business coach and say, will you help me to improve my business? And those things are perfectly able to be done one-on-one. I used to work as a designer one-on-one myself. The problem with that model is that once you have uh, been working with clients and you have you know, X number of clients, then you have maxed out the time that you have to spend in the week, which means you have also maxed out how much money that you can make with your business because you have no more hours in the day to work one-on-one with clients. The great thing about a group coaching model is that you can share your expertise at scale with people in a group setting because what you would know if you've worked one-on-one with clients is that many, many times the clients have exactly the same questions over and over and over again, the same problems, the same sort of situation. And you find yourself in a one-to-one setting saying the same things over and over to people, which you could say to them in a group setting. So I actually had a group coaching program myself last year. In the end, it was not the program for me. It was not the right thing for me. And I'll tell you a few reasons why that's the case in a minute. And I'm just looking off to the side because I've got a couple of notes that I just want to make sure that I share um, with you. But one of the best things about a group coaching model, along with just being able to scale your time a little better so that you're not working one-on-one with people and you're not capping your time, is that you're also embedding a recurring revenue model into your business, which means that you don't have to every month go out and find new clients. It means that clients will pay you a sort of retainer, a monthly fee or an annual fee to work with you. And as a result of that, you'll be having money coming in all the time, which means that you don't have to sort of find another client, fill that gap that's you know fallen off because that client's finished their project and that sort of thing. So this is a great thing to build into your business. Recurring revenue wherever possible is a fantastic model for online business, obviously, from those, for those reasons that I was telling you. Let me tell you a little bit about how a model like that might work. So when I was running my online group coaching program, what I had was uh, a group coaching sort of experience once a month. So they had access to come into a live Zoom call with me and we would brainstorm ideas around their business and the things that they were having. This was for my interior designers that I work with in my other, in my main business, the Little Design Corner. And so this was a group coaching program for interior designers to help them grow a profitable design business. So that was the purpose of the group coaching program. And it's really important that your group coaching program does have a purpose because you want to make sure that there is an actual transformation that you're helping people achieve by being in your program because otherwise they will come for a month and then be like, what's this all about? and have no reason to keep paying you month on month. So for me, the way that I provided that value is to have that experience of working with me in that group setting once a month where they could ask me one-on-one questions about their business and other people could hear the answers that I was giving to that particular person in that group setting. And oftentimes they had the same questions and they would get lots of value out of that as well. So that's the really good thing about group coaching model. In addition to that, I would provide monthly trainings that I would pre-record and I would upload into the portal and they would have access to that. And then we had a whole bunch of other sort of stuff as well that I would create and deliver to them each month as part of the fee that they paid me for being part of the group coaching experience. Now, they loved it or, you know, the designers that were in that, they loved it. But after about six months of doing this, for me, there were some problems. Number one, I absolutely rebel from having anything in my diary. I hate having things in my diary. And so I would see the group coaching call come up once a month. It was only once a month and I would see it coming up and I would see it for the weeks before and I think, oh no, I've got to do that group coaching call. And even though I actually really enjoyed it on the day and when I was doing it, it was just the thing of me rebelling from having things in my diary and just seeing them coming up that just put me off the 
program and running the program all together, combined with the fact that I was on a content treadmill where I was creating really, really high quality trainings every single month for the designers in my group. And I was becoming very, very burnt out from that constant um, creation mode and having to deliver at such a high level every single month. I am an over deliverer. So that was a major problem for this program because I was over delivering, especially for how much the designers were paying for the program because they were getting a lot of value for the money that they were paying. And so in the end, I like went deep into my soul and just felt really, really bad and stopped the program after about six months. I felt so bad about it. I refunded a hundred thousand dollars back to everybody that was part of the program. I gave them access to everything that had been in the program and gave them all their money back. That's how bad I felt about it. I didn't actually have to do that, but I am the kind of person who believes wholeheartedly in client experience and client karma and just doing the right thing. And so I just felt for me, I was letting them down by closing down the program that they were enjoying. And so I just felt like that was the right thing to do. So all of that to say that group coaching is a great model and I am not trying to put you off group coaching because for some people it would be a fantastic model and it's a really, really easy way of bringing in some revenue, recurring revenue into your business. And it's a really, really easy way. If you already have quite a heavy client roster, if you could move some of those people into a group model, that would be a fantastic way of immediately trying to scale your business online and just trying to package up some of that stuff that you're doing one-on-one -on -one with people already anyway, and then putting that into a group model. For me, it wasn't the right thing. For lots of people, it's a fantastic thing. I'm also quite introverted. So I you know, find that sort of thing takes a lot of my energy versus people who are a bit more extroverted find this a great way to give their energy and to get energy from other people as well. So it really depends on your personality. And that is number three idea. Number four idea is to create online courses. Now this one is my favorite because this is how I have built my entire uh, business. And as I said, that's been very, very successful over the past three or so years since I have started my online courses business. And I now have lots and lots of online courses across two different brands. So I've got my little design corner brand, which I've already spoken about, which is for designers and architects who are growing a profitable design business. I have 17, I think, business short courses for those designers. And I also have a signature course on SketchUp, which is a piece of software in the interior design industry teach them how to use that software. That was the first course I ever created. That was the life-changing course that had changed the trajectory of my life, my family's life, my husband who left his corporate job as well to come and work in, my, in the business and to do his own thing and create his own business as well. So it's been very, very life-changing um, for us. So that's that side of it. And then in my Claire Leroy brand, my personal brand, after being asked so many times by people, how are you building this online business and what are you doing and you know how do you actually put together an online course? I also now have a whole brand dedicated to building an online business and I've got my signature course in that brand, which is Online Course Creator, which is my course and program all about how to build your own profitable online course. So online courses for me, I love them. I could talk again all day about them, but I think it's all pretty straightforward about that in terms of the idea. You can do short courses, long courses, signature courses, um, little brief um, courses. I've got those in my uh, in my little design corner brand. I've got lots of sort of 90 minute or so short courses and they are fantastic because it gets people really easy, quick wins and they're very low priced and they are very, very popular. My signature courses, my SketchUp course and my online course creator are higher ticket courses, but People get a lot of uh, in-depth value and in-depth information in those courses. Much longer courses take a bit longer to work through and many, many more sort of resources and templates and everything that go with them. So lots of different opportunities and different ideas for creating online courses and just a fantastic way to then scale your knowledge and your experience even more with something that you create once and can sell over and over and over again. So I love it more than the group coaching model, for example, because it doesn't require my monthly import. It doesn't require me having to be on Zoom calls. I can do Zoom calls and sometimes I do do Zoom calls, but I do them on my own terms. They're not a set part of what people are paying for. And so that works really, really well for me. 
It also means that if you do already have a signature process that you work with, with clients one-on-one -on -one or something like that, you can immediately turn that into an online course. So I have a download on my website if you would like to think about how to start with an online course. It's a uh, download about how to find your online course topic, your profitable online course topic. So that might be something that's worth downloading if you're interested in online courses in the upcoming year. And so that's definitely one to have a look at. So that is my fourth idea. Okay, that brings us to the final idea that I have for you, which is a paid community. Now, this one is becoming really popular, and I think there's heaps of opportunity here. I haven't actually done officially a paid community, although I do now sort of have that with my business short course platform that I have in my little design corner brand. So what that is now is people have access to the short course that they purchase from me. So it's got that online course component to it. But then when when they buy that one of those short courses with me, they automatically join my online community for interior designers and architects. And in that community, I have a whole bunch of other resources and templates and other little mini short courses. I also put up some monthly content. I put up a monthly knowledge club in my community just sort of like a book club, but on steroids, it gives, you know, videos and just stuff that and podcasts and recommendations and things that I've been listening to and finding helpful. So they get access to that. They get access to a monthly review template that they can put together so that they can keep track of their businesses and track their metrics and that sort of thing. And just the chance to be part of that community and ask questions and of other designers that are in there. And I've got thousands of members in that community now. So that's really growing and it is a great um, way for people to uh, be part of a community of like-minded people. And that's what I think is really the benefit of a paid community platform. So I use a platform called Circle for my uh, online community. And it's fantastic because it's got that hybrid of courses and community. And I like to think of it a bit like a cross between Facebook groups and Slack and maybe Kajabi or one of those sort of online course hosting platforms. A lot of people don't want to be on Facebook anymore, I find. And so I found taking my community off Facebook has been really good because it means people aren't worried about Facebook and sort of being part of Facebook. And I have lots of people who don't want to be part of Facebook groups. So having it off platforms really good. It also means that if anything happens with Facebook, with changes to algorithms or anything like that, you don't lose your community ever if you've built that up because you'll have that off platform, you own that community. And that's really good as well. So I think there's a lot of opportunity with paid communities. And I think the more you build out your personal brand online, the more you'll find that there's probably a group of people who wanna go a little deeper with you, who want a little bit more access to you, but you might not wanna go into specifically that group coaching model where you feel you've got to be on and delivering every month, but they might just want to have access to be able to ask you questions and pick your brain about stuff. And that might be a better forum for you to do it. Because for me, I find that much better than group coaching because they can message me or they can write in the comment section and I will always write back to them one-on-one. -on -one. So they're still getting that one-on-one -on -one feedback without me feeling like I've got that thing in my diary that I have to rebel against. So for me, I think a paid community is really fantastic. Now, a couple of other things that I've been thinking about for my own paid community for the upcoming year, for this little design corner community, which I think are great opportunities for lots of people, is that even if you don't feel like you're the expert in a topic, you could actually curate a community around bringing in other experts to deliver some content and some knowledge and some um, access that you could provide to the paid community. So for example, I've been thinking about trying to find other designers to come in and talk about their businesses and I might interview them or they might come in and do a little presentation on how they run their businesses and I think that would be such a big value add because I know I would have loved that when I was working as an interior designer because I love hearing about the behind the scenes of how other people are running their businesses and that would be something that people will a hundred percent pay for I know that they would pay for that sort of access to some of the top designers in Australia or in the world to hear about how they're running their business and the you know systems and the processes processes and how they charge and just be able to pick the brains of those people. So if you think about that in your niche, you could do something similar where you are the person who is curating the knowledge and the expertise from others. So it doesn't necessarily require you to be the content um, 
owner or the professional you know person who has to have all the knowledge which lots of people get scared about because they feel like they're not an expert in anything so that's a really good way around that problem the other thing that's great about an online community is that you can put people in like little accountability pods so say with a business community uh, you could have people sort of meeting up and encouraging them to sort of get together in smaller pods of people perhaps people who are in you know local areas or people who are in local time zones or whatever it might be and they could then get together of their own accord to just stay on track and stay accountable to a group of people because people are looking for connection they're looking for accountability to stay on track with their goals and this can be a really great way for you to be the facilitator of some of those little um, accountability things and things like that and then they will associate you with the uh, progress that they start to make in their business because you are the one who is facilitating that for them so these are just a few little ideas for paid community the other thing I like about a paid community is it's not the owner is it's not as onerous as that um, model I was telling you about with the group coaching where you've got to be creating all the time new trainings you know new live Q&A sessions all this other sort of content that you've got to be delivering I don't think there's as much pressure on a paid community as such to be on with that content delivery because people are really coming more for that community experience and for being part of uh, a community of like-minded people and having those connections with a community of like-minded people. So I think it's a really great one. Uh, it's another really great one for recurring revenue because you will put people obviously on an annual or a monthly sort of subscription model for that sort of thing. And again, that means that you only have to sell to those people once and then you've got that money coming in every single month as long as you are doing a good job and they don't leave your community. So your job being that you have to provide a great community experience and the value of you know the experts you bring in or the community experience you provide or the accountability stuff that you build into your community or whatever it is that your community would offer. So those are my five ideas. So we had in summary, we had the idea of building your personal brand. That was point number one. And I think that is the best place for any of you to start. So if you have been holding off wanting to build an online business, please, 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 please stop thinking about it and start creating content. Like I told you about my husband, Paul, who's just started doing this. It's life changing. He now will probably turn what he is doing into a whole other online business that we will have in our family that is then not only something that he really enjoys doing and likes creating content about and just is living his dream of just going about his life and going to jujitsu and creating videos and not having to go to work as such, he will also build something where he probably will sell online courses or have a group coaching model or whatever it is he decides to do down the track that will then bring in more revenue into our family, which will be life changing. The first place to start is with a personal brand and with creating free content. The second place to go is to start to just test the waters with selling stuff online and just start to get that muscle going with selling your first $19 or low price, low ticket things online, learning that skill of how to actually set up a little shop face and sell things and create things of value that people actually want and finding a product market fit with a niche and with a community. That's really important because you're never going to make a million dollars online if you can't make first 19 or $1 online. Number three is group coaching. I told you about the pros and cons of my experience, but don't let me put you off. Group coaching wasn't for me, but it doesn't mean that it wouldn't be for you. You might be a completely different person to me, but it also is just got lots and lots of pros just in terms of that recurring revenue model and also just the really easiest way if you already have a really busy service-based client roster, it's a really, really simple way of turning a lot of those clients into a group coaching program and suddenly freeing up a lot of your time because then you can service those clients in a more sort of um, easier way for you and for your time and probably make more money as you go with it as well. Online courses, my true one love. If you want to go deeper on how to start an online course, I've told you about some of the resources you can use to get going with that. I've got my free PDF on my website. And I also have a free webinar where I go into more depth on my own personal journey of um, creating online courses and creating my own online business. And I also teach you my 12-step course launch system in that webinar and also help you to choose a topic and also help you to learn how to get started with an online course. So if any 
any of that sounds of interest, you can uh, join that webinar in a off my website as well. So that is linked. Yeah, you know, I'll put a link down in the description area for you. And then number five is paid community. So this is sort of, I guess, a um, little bit of a scaled back version of group coaching in a way, but also it doesn't require you to be a true expert in anything really. You just have to be a passionate um, person who wants to build community and be someone who becomes the leader of that community. So you will then become a curator of bringing in other experts or a curator of pairing people together into accountability pods or whatever it is that you might think of for your paid community. So that's a really great one as well. If you just love or are passionate about a topic and you want to get into working online in a way, but you don't feel like you're a true expert in that yet. So some ideas I gave you there around how to do that as well. So that is my video for this week. I hope that gives you some ideas for some online businesses that you could start in the upcoming year. Can I please leave you with one thing? And that is the story of what I did myself, which is that when I first was wanting to move out of service-based businesses and online, which I knew I wanted to do for years and years and years, I would obsessively listen to podcasts on my walk about online business. And I'd always be thinking of new online course ideas that I could do or all sorts of things that I could be doing instead of working one-to-one with interior design clients. I thought about that for three years, believe it or not, different ideas. And I you know, watch people start courses on the ideas that I'd had and I'd got set, get so annoyed because I'd think, oh, I should have just done that course and now someone else has done it so I shouldn't bother doing it, which is not true, by the way, because you can always do a course on the same thing that other people are doing it on because people want you and want to hear your information and your spin on things. Sidetrack. But... The important thing that I was trying to say about that is that I really, so I thought about it for three years, then I started taking action. I delivered my first course, which was my SketchUp course. And there's a whole story behind that as well, which I do share a bit more about in that webinar if you wanna watch that, or I can tell that story another time. But the point being that then the next three years, I made nearly $5 million, so $4.5 million I made in the upcoming three years. So I thought about it for three years and did nothing and made nothing. And then I took action for three years and I didn't make nothing. I made a lot of money and I completely, completely changed my life. I now work less time than I used to. I now absolutely love everything that I'm doing. I'm up at four in the morning because I want to be, because I love what I do. And yeah, it's just been absolutely life-changing for me. So I hope that's given you some ideas. I hope I've shared, you know, some helpful stuff for you to have a think about. But the biggest thing I want to leave you with is to please just start taking action on something, whether that's just getting started with your personal brand, because it will be life-changing. And no matter what happens with it, if you put in the consistent effort, you will get somewhere with it. You'll either learn something or you'll learn you hate it, or you'll learn you love it, or you'll make lots of money, or you'll build a fantastic community, or you'll do all of those things. So I hope that's been helpful. I've rambled for long enough and I will catch you in my next video. By the way, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I do share daily tips over there to just try and help you with all these sorts of things about building an online business. So please come and follow me over there as well. And I'd love to have you and DM me as well. I answer all of the DMs myself. So if you've got any value out of this today or any ideas you'd like to bounce around with me, definitely feel free to DM me and I'll come back to you with any thoughts that I have. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.